Maybe we'll uh, finish up by exploring what, you know, how, how we got to be skeptics, right? I find that an interesting question. But uh, you mentioned Uri Geller, and you've spoken in the media about Uri Geller, and you've uh, done research into dowsing and other parapsychology claims, like individual claimants, as opposed to being an expert critic of parapsychology research. Those are kind of two halves of your career, and I draw a distinction between those two kinds of efforts. Um, at uh, is, is one more compelling or interesting to you than the other? Is one kind of skepticism more important to you than the other? That's a leading question, but yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I always find parapsychology dull. I find it very dull and not interested in it at all. Mm -hmm. And I find that the fun part of skepticism is dealing with Uri Geller and uh, the mediums who talk to the dead and the dowsers who... Uh, uh, find, uh, not only find water, but they can find the gold and, and, and Shendley's number nine, depending on what they put in their uh, dowsing rod or their pendulum. I find all that, that part fast. That, to me, is the fun part. <laughs> the, the, the parapsychology part is not fun, and it's, I got stuck into it, uh, and unfortunately, you know, they always come to me, and uh, the time I put into it, to me, it's just wasted for mm. me. I, do, I, I prefer to do other things. Do you regret it? Do you regret the 50 years of expert uh, not, criticism? Not really regret, but I, 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 I regret it if I think about it in the sense <laughs> that, um, that all the things I could have done professionally mm. and otherwise, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. this took up a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's boring, as you said, and I just don't find it fun. And, and it sounds like you're more interested in the psychology of belief questions than the parapsychology questions. Yes, definitely. So rather than the evidence of psi, you're interested more in why people believe the stuff, right. despite the lack of evidence. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, and so if you had it all to do over again, would that be more of a focus for you? You never know, but yes. <laughs> you never know, but yes. I like that answer. Uh, I, I want to um, have some time for audience questions, but I want to ask you about the last 35 years of the movement, right? And from your vantage, you see that there's grown up around the world, not just the United States, but really around the world, a worldwide skeptics movement. When you and Martin Gardner and uh, Randy and Paul Kurtz and others founded PSYCOP, you didn't sit in some back room with some plan to create a worldwide movement, right? You were just um, thinkers coming together, wanted to offer criticism of these prevailing beliefs, correct? Well, there are many creation stories about the founding of the movement. <laughs> and we're going to go into some of them at the at next the next amazing right. meeting, yes. But, for, uh, for our, I'll just announce for our, our listeners that for the f first time in the history of TAM, we're going to have a panel on the history, the origins of the skeptics movement featuring uh, uh, Ray and Paul Kurtz and Randy and uh, Ken Fraser and hopefully Martin Gardner by video. So those are interesting questions. But I'm asking you about the the really the movement aspect of it. Was there a plan for there to be a movement around these ideas and ideals? What happened was it wasn't that well organized, obviously. But what happened, as far as I'm concerned, was um, the key things that led to the current uh, skeptics movement was Martin Gardner, his fads and fallacies in the name of science. Mm -hmm. That's the... Uh, that's, that's the thing we all look towards. One of the sacred texts. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Good way of putting it. And then uh, there was Alice Cooper, and, and Uri Geller had a big hand in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason with Alice Cooper, uh, uh, by the way, Geller has a hand in it because in 1972, I get a call from the uh, uh, Colonel Austin Kibler, who was then head of um, uh, the Advanced Research Projects Agency, the same group that brought you the Internet. Uh, and uh, they, that's the group that was founded by President Kennedy to be the Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon part of the Defense Department, to look into futuristic things. And I got a call from him, and I was grading papers at the University of Oregon. I got a call from him in 1982, December, uh, saying, Ray, could you drop whatever you're doing and go down to Stanford Research Institute, where they have a psychic in captivity who they're studying? <laughs> 
And that was Uri Geller. That was Uri, happened yeah. to be Uri Geller. Yeah. And um, uh, so I went down here, of course, and, uh, and it was the most bizarre thing I ever saw. And then uh, as a result of my report, uh, they knew they weren't, weren't going to get any money from the Defense Department, so they took Geller on the road and they went to New York and uh, promenaded him in front of New York Time, and, uh, Time Magazine. And mm -hmm. Time Magazine got Randy to pretend that he was a reporter and sit in uh, when Geller did his demo for them. And that's when Randy saw it. When the chicanery, yeah. Well, well, when Geller left the room, Randy apparently replicated a lot of what Geller did and showed it was a, a, a fraud. But anyways, as a result of that, in 1972, uh, Time Magazine had an article called The Magician and the Think Tank. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, you know, they pointed out how Randy had, uh, that uh, here is this uh, psychic. The, so the first written public publicity Gal got in this country was a expose by Time Magazine. And, and this they, was they, before Psych Up. This is 72, Oh, yeah, not this is before, this is 72, yeah. yeah. But well, you were all connected even then. No, or are you no, connected? no. What happened is Geller was the one who get, should get the credit for connecting us. So. <laughs> what happened was, uh, as a result of this, I didn't know Randy that well at that mm -hmm. time. I knew of him, and he knew of me mm -hmm. because we were both and both were, were disciples of Martin Gardner. Yeah. But I was out here in Oregon, uh, out in Oregon, and um, uh, so as a result of this article, you know, I'm in it and Randy's in it. We are the two key people who uh, were exposing Geller at that time. Uh, Randy then was traveling uh, on a, with Alice Cooper. I knew nothing about it. I don't know. My, my, the the not, rock star Alice Cooper. Yeah, Randy was yeah. part of his Yeah, I his thought Alice show. Cooper was a she when he called me about it. <laughs> uh, but anyways, he was traveling with Alice Cooper. And Alice Cooper, I don't know if you know about it. It's a, I didn't know much about it. I don't know much about modern music. I stopped with Beethoven and I, anything after that is, <laughs> is, is too much for me. But anyway, uh, I get a call from Randy. He's traveling. He's, he's part of the show. Randy was traveling as a mad dentist, then the lady becomes a mad magician, and he cuts off Alice's head in a guillotine, and he dances around the stage. This is how they end the, end the show, apparently, with uh, the blood dripping from Alice's head. <laughs> and then they, they, everything goes black, and then they, there's a long pause, and then there's a resurrection scene. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Alice comes back from life, and that's, that's, that's how they end the show. Mm -hmm. And Randy was a big feature of it, of course. So Randy was traveling with the show, and they came to Portland, and I get this call from Randy when he's in Portland. He says, Ray, uh, you've got to come up here. Alice Cooper wants to see you. He, he wants you to look at the show and, and explain to him why he's got two, only why he's got uh, these problems with his fans. He's got very young teenagers like him, and college students like him, but high school students have nothing to do with him. <laughs> and so he figured if I, uh, so Randy told him about me as a psychologist and stuff like that, and he said he thought that somehow I could come up and watch the show and explain to him all that. <laughs> and so this sounded all already weird. I didn't know what Alice Cooper was even. Or, who or she, uh, he was. And then he said also, but he didn't mention at that, in that column, uh, the, the other reason he wanted to talk to me. So I went up there, I met Alice Cooper, and it, and it turned out to be a he. Uh, at least I think it was a he. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> actually, a pretty nice guy, and he a very conservative guy, I was surprised, mm -hmm. you know. Devoutly uh, and religious. Politically, yeah. and he had his nose bent, and it turned out he'd fallen, and he used to run marathons, and he'd fallen at the end of a marathon and fell on his nose. And so he knew, so when he found out I had ran marathons, we became good friends because, you know, we exchanged talk on marathoning and everything else. Uh, but um, in all of this, you know, I went, I was on the stage, uh, they put earphones in me, so fresh, fortunately I was on the side, and between every act, Alice would come to me when they had the blackout, come over, he acted like he was drunk, he was falling, about to fall over, he actually was uh, addicted to beer, not to drugs, everyone else on his group were, were into bug, they would smoke all kinds of stuff, but he only drank beer, a Coors beer. And, um, <laughs> and he would come to me, uh, he would straighten up in between the acts when, the, when the, all the lights went off, he'd run over to me and explain to me what's going on. He said, now, wait, wait this next act, you're going to see the, the kids are going to throw things at me, you know, they're going to be mad at me because I'm going to insult their parents. And he would explain everything, and he had perfect control of everything. But he knew more about what's going on than I did. Mm. He didn't need my advice on that. But the other thing is, in between all this, Randy took me aside and said, you know, Ray, we ought to do something about this Uri Geller business and, uh, and, and, and general the public's interest in all this crazy stuff. And so he said, let's form an organization called SUR. That was his name for it. 
you know, SRI, he took the initials SRI and made SIR, sir, and he meant by that sanity in research. So that was the first suggestion or anything. So he, we called Martin Gardner, so he, Martin Gardner, and I found our group that's called Sir, we called it, and then we changed it to some other names. And we started that in 1972. We had a big meeting at Martin's house, big, the three of us. That was it. 